welcome back everyone to another video and in this one i have something very interesting so over at github andrew actually managed to get or start a bit of uh, windows 10 like the full blown windows 10 on the raspberry pi now it sounds all awesome and everything and i'm going to show you how it works but there are a few kinks to keep in mind so let's go through and see how that works so the first part is to actually get uh, the iso or the sd card image now it's not as straightforward as downloading an iso and flashing it you do have to do a fair bit of work to get the drivers into the iso and uh, actually make it like work properly so i failed pretty bad at it because i've never ever used like you know done any bit of hacking on windows and i've been like a linux guy since the beginning so once i finally had the windows 10 vm running and all the tools and everything else installed it just uh, ended up failing over and over again uh, especially in the sd card read write um, stage so i think that's mostly because i was running windows 10 on a vm so if you have a proper windows 10 machine i don't uh, you know just just use that instead of a virtual machine uh, if possible if you want to like go ahead and work it out so finally, Dom from Nova Spread Tech actually uh, pinged me and uh, and helped me out a lot. So go make sure to go ahead and check out his channel linked in the description as well as up top. But uh, I'll add the card and go ahead check out his channel and he has also done a few videos on this topic. Um, all right, so let's go through it. So once you have the SD card, the boot takes really long. Now I'm. I know why the boot takes long and it's a known issue and okay, let's first go through the whole boot process uh, I'll um, put in the key points in the boot process and this is actually fast forwarded quite a bit so let's get started All right, now the boot is done. Um, so is it because of the Windows 10 boot process is slow or is it because of the Raspberry Pi itself being slow? Um, although there are some truth in both of these uh, scenarios, it's not that, it's not either of those issues. It's that the SD card driver um, is fairly proprietary and uh, the high speed part of it so the driver that is now available uh, and compatible with the raspberry pi um provided by andrew is uh, it's 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 a bit slow so it's uh, it, it maxes out at six megabytes per second uh, which is tediously slow to boot uh, and run an os as we'll see later on all right so what all works um steam works kind of so you really need a uh, internet connection to you know get steam up and running fully uh, but the client kind of opens up and runs 
Firefox works. Firefox works. It opens up properly, but again, requires internet. Virtual DJ works, kind of. I haven't tried it a whole lot, but the UI seemed to work. It seemed to run uh, all well. But most importantly, Microsoft Office works. Uh, it's kind of slow to boot and might hang in a little bit once uh, it's like loaded and everything. But at the end of the day, it does work fairly well um, for, for running on a Raspberry Pi with a maximum read write speed of six megabytes per second. It's, it, it works fairly decent. Now, um, a few things. Right now with my build, uh, there is an issue with like having network connections uh, using a USB gigabit LAN because of the driver issues uh, and, and things like that. So USB driver is even worse uh, than the SD card driver. SD card driver is at least somewhat stable. The USB driver crashes every so often and I was only able to get the keyboard and mouse running um, like for a f for some time and then it crashed and then I had to reboot the, ho the whole system which is weird. So that's, that's, that's the state of it. Uh, it takes a while to boot. Um, although Microsoft Word works, it also takes a fair bit of time to boot uh, to load onto the system from the SD card and yeah apart from that it's a really really interesting project so at the end of the day it's not really messing around with the Windows 10 itself it all boils down to that UEFI bootloader that Andrew wrote um, or made run uh, made it run on the Raspberry Pi so that UEFI bootloader uh, is fairly close to ACPI standards uh, not, not not a whole lot but fairly close just to make the Raspberry Pi 3 work uh, properly with Windows 10 and um, yeah so that's where the majority of the work has gone so if you take a look that's like your proper um, UEFI loader that you would find on most computer systems it's not as comprehensive as I've seen on the developer box the developer box ones uh, are, are quite uh, in depth detail and like very very close to ACPI standards uh, and from what I've been told they are kind of the go-to so if you want like an example of how an ARM based uh, system like UEFI should be go to the developer box UEFI and see how they did it and it's fully open sourced so uh, so it's not as good but if you go into it uh, that's like mostly what you would need for uh, something like a Raspberry Pi with uh, very limited peripherals so yeah all like a fair bit of work done and if you want to take a look at the developer box stuff uh, the, their UEFI bias I've, uh, I'll link it uh, up there and add a card and like have things in the description uh, but yeah it's uh, it's a really nice experience uh, to like um, and seeing people go ahead and implement full-blown uh, UEFI biases that are fairly ACPI compatible and then you can just boot whatever you want which is always a nice thing so you can get rid of all of that custom images a custom image for the beagle board a custom image for the raspberry pi uh, a custom image for the dragon board a, cus a custom image for every other arm board is not a good thing uh, people and imo people should implement uefi on their boards and just boot the generic images which is like always a lot better 
Now, if you want to create your own SD card, I won't really be linking a Windows 10 install file down below for, you know, reasons. Uh, but if you want to create your own, uh, other people have created, um, you know, tutorials and other things like that. And I'll link those as well. Um, of course, a huge shout out to all the people who have helped me on the on the GitHub issue page. There is actually a, uh, an issue page called the Mega Windows 10 on ARM. Uh, github issue page and you can go there discuss your findings discuss your issues people are there to help you andrew dom from uh, nova tech spirit a couple of more people uh, who uh, i only remember by their github id uh, i'll add their pages on the on your screen but um, apart from that yes a very lot of helpful people there uh, check out Nova Tech Spirit for future updates. I might not be doing a whole lot of content around this. Uh, this was just a one-time experiment that really excited me. But if you want to follow up, uh, hit up Nova Spirit Tech. Uh, hit up uh, other people. I'll link in the description. Sorry, I'm not remembering their name right now. Uh, and just make sure to take a look. It's an interesting project. Even if you are a Linux lover, you will really appreciate the amount of work that sort of has been uh, gone into it um so that's about it uh, thank you so much for watching and um i'll of course take a look at the links in the description uh, and i'll see you all in the next one bye